Morning. It's uh, Bank Holiday Monday. And uh, yeah, I forgot to pick the camera up. I left both days over the weekend I didn't forgot to pick the camera up, so I uh, didn't get any filming done. But yeah, stuff's uh, got a few things done. This grass is starting to grow like mad here. I think I'm going to have to cut this little bit because I still haven't got around to getting any cattle out. Yeah, I've ordered some. Uh, uh, auto warming boluses for the cows, so uh, I'm waiting for them to come and then I want to get a bunch out, but everything just needs doing it once. That chicken shed that's over in the distance, over there, uh, desperately needs mucking out. If muck's coming through the floor. Um, but uh, I was putting it off because I'm very short of eggs and although my pullets are laying now, I'm only just basically catching up on being behind for about a week. I've been running out every day and it's, yeah. So um, I want, uh, mucking it out will almost definitely knock the production for a bit. So I didn't want to do it until I had my pullets laid. Um, but they're coming now, they're about, I think I got about 14, yeah, 14 trays I think yesterday. And I uh, got two trays of medium. So yeah, they're coming really well. And to be fair, most of them so far, most of them are laying in the nest boxes. So I can hear all my cattle being noisy. I've just been out and done some, uh, uh, gone and done my deliveries and done a few jobs. So. so we'll go up into this top yard and see what's going on. Right. They're all fed now, quieting down. On Friday I went and got these two little fellas. Well, there's one fella, one girl. Which is a bit annoying. Um, yeah, my fault really. It's a bit unusual for um, to sell a boar and a gilt in the same lot as a pair from the same litter. Um, but it's still my fault, I should have checked. But. They were quite near the end of the sale, I thought they looked quite smart, so I thought, well, and there was no other pairs, they were all in bunches of five or six again. So I thought, oh well, I'll hang on and I'll see if I can get this pair. I thought it was a pair of gilts because I noticed one of them was a gilt. Um, but no, when, they, when, the, when the auctioneer got to them, he said it's a boar and a gilt. So, so I'll, they'll have to either be gone from here pretty smarty, so I'll have to separate them at some point. The other two are still growing well. The, the fellow that I bought them off last time had a few in, but again, they were all in big groups. I don't, and I just, yeah, didn't get a chance to speak to anyone to see whether they would split them up, so I thought. So I went with these. I think they're like, they've got nice shape on them, but whether they're like Gloucester Old Spots or some sort of cross, and I don't really know. Um, Very rapidly getting through barley. I'm going to have to go and get some more barley, I think. Don't know when the hell I'm going to get time. Put that trough there. I thought, well, it's silly it not. It sat down there doing nothing, and it doesn't half keep the keep the silage, you know, from keep them from pushing the silage away. This one's worked really well, so I thought it might as well go there. I could do with a whole row of them, really. But yeah, I went and got another load of straw outside straw last night because I seem to be getting through them, especially because I'm running low in my calf shed. So that's run out. I've got two thirds of a load of muck on there that wants spreading, and I don't know where to spread it. Now, yesterday I finished this off. I've got a set of tines for one rotor of my rake. Um, I've been harping on about doing it for, well, Years. I think one of my one, one of my first videos I was talking about this rig and how it needed a new set of tines. Um, I was going to buy a full set of, for two rotors, but when I came to measure them, I realised that this this rotor, all of the tines on this rotor were about nearly an inch shorter than the other set, the other side, and that side isn't actually too bad. They're not that much. They're about oh, between 10 and 20 mil shorter than the new one. Whereas these were, you know, an inch shorter again. And it just doesn't row, row nicely at all. It misses loads of grass. Because the, 
to, to lower their wheels down, they were banging on these arms, which is why all the paint's worn off on the arms. Anyway, so I got a uh, price off class, and they were, I think they were nearly getting on for £10 a time. And I need 60 of them, so it was going to be like over 700 quid with the VAT um, for the set. So I went to uh, a dealer that's got that trades in Cramp and Sparex. Um, the Cramp ones look to be a couple of mil shorter on the spec sheet than the uh, class. Um, but they were cheaper, they were about £7 a time. Uh, and then we checked Spare X, and Spare X were longer, they were actually like 10 mil longer than the class ones, and they were only £6 something. So I was like, right, well, we'll go with the Spare X ones. So we tried to order them, but apparently there's only about 16 in the, in the country. And you're looking at a five week wait if you want to bring them over from Europe. So. Uh, that was a bit of a joke, really. So uh, the fellow from the dealer that I was talking to, he rung up Cramp and said, oh, will you match Spare X's price? And they said they would. So I got Cramp ones for the same price as a Spare X one. And um, I ordered 30 of them, which is done one rotor. So I'm excited, really, to give it a go and see whether it, it rose up any better. I'm a bit disappointed if it doesn't. Um, so yeah, I got them switched over. There was four, four broken ones on the rake. There was two on each side. So once I did this side, I took the two best, longest uh, tines that I took off and replaced the two that were broken on that side. So it's got a full set of tines now, and it's all greased up and ready to go. Um, so I don't know whether we're going to be mowing anything soon. I've put a, I've made an offer on a field just up the road that's um, being rented out for the summer cutting and it's got grass on it that wants cutting it's like up to your waist fast grass um, but it made me realize that I'm not at all prepared for doing any sort of uh, silage in yet this mower I need to get the mower out next because it's got a the tire's gone down over winter so I need to pull that out and find out whether it is a puncher or whether it's just a slow that can maybe put some gunk in it or something. So that's what I've been doing over the weekend. What else have we been doing? Got done nothing else. Oh, I've left my coat. Done nothing else to the greenhouse. Um, and oh, we did go and do a bit more chainsawing um, with that tree that had fallen down. So. It's not all cut up, but it's it's mostly cut um, cleared off where I need to be able to mow. So whether I'll get a chance to go back and finish that or not, I don't know. So yeah, I'm just it's all just coming in a hurry, isn't it? I feel a bit bogged down with things I need to do because if I did go and start mowing grass anytime soon, I've got to decide where I'm going to put the blooming bales because I don't know whether I want to put them here just in case I do end up building a bit of a shed. So the place to put them would be up where I have all my crushed brick, that area. Uh, so I need to order some uh, finer crush to screen it off so I can drive on it. And I could do with my digger, but my digger's not here and oh, it's just, I've got loads of things to do and uh, just not enough time to do them. I don't know whether everyone's the same. But anyway, I'm going to go get some breakfast. And then I think this afternoon I've got to um, go move some soil for someone. So, for my neighbour. So, we'll see how that goes.
haven't really got any sheep to uh, to graze this with yet. Again, it's one of them. I need to try and find the time to uh, get up to a market. Uh, buy some using lambs, but it's coming towards the end. It's a funny old year, isn't it? Everything, everything you do is just strange. It's like we put putting fertilizer on. I've only just finished that, and it's already time to spray. Or it's almost getting too late to be spraying weeds. And it's like, so what do you do? Do you just do you leave them or? doesn't seem to know what it's doing. We've had a really hot weekend and it's gone really muggy and dull today. That's what we jumper back on. But as soon as the sun comes out it's lovely and warm. I'd have thought there would be some maize going in now if the ground's warm enough. It's, it's late enough isn't it? But yeah I mean unless the ground dries out. It's going to be uh, difficult to do any silage in any time soon. It's going to be, it's going to end up being like last year where you're just going to be tiptoeing around your fields trying to get bales off, not driving in the same place twice. Having to really uh, think where you put your trailers. But then again, come second cut time, it could be the opposite. It could be uh, bone dry. I'm rambling on now, I might. Yeah, I need to uh, get some sheep before this grass gets ahead of us. I don't know whether I might go. To Bentham on Wednesday, or the problem is, is that I also need to sell some sheep, and um, that's on a Monday, the same day as Skipton, which is the other place I would go for sheep. So they've got an electric gate into this field. And you have to you used to have a fob because it's actually a driveway for the big house. Who, uh, where, who owns it? Um, yeah, I used to have a fob, but the, the fob broke, and then eventually they've decided to put a SIM card system in where you just ring a number and it opens the gate. Um, which is, I could do with doing something similar on my gate because. It's a bit annoying when you, if you're away from home and um, lorry driver turns up or something to deliver feed and you can't let them in. <coughs> it's all money isn't it? Hoping the dam might be able to fashion something up maybe. That says where he's been in Switzerland. Of the game, then they're already making hay, so it must be a bit ahead of us in the seasons. So, yeah. Hopefully, at the end of this video, if I get around to editing something, uh, we might have a bit of a uh, clip from Dan. Uh, he sent lots of uh, got lots of photos and uh, videos, but it's, it's all. It's all a bit rambly and unless you know what he's doing it doesn't really make any sense to try and edit something together. Put the spreader off now and put the trailer on. Grass, 
steady going, but got hopefully tip a few loads of it in a hole up here now where I've been tipping up. Yeah, years ago, I think the landlord dug a great big hole here in like a, with a big, like a 13 ton digger and it must have gone down about 15 foot or even more full reach of the 13 ton digger <clears throat> and I think they buried I think it was to bury a horse I don't know why he dug it so deep um, whether there was other things he buried in there, I don't know, but he leveled it off afterwards, but I mean, you're probably going back 10 years now, nearly 10 years. Uh, and it's just sunk and sunk and sunk ever since, and we've ended up with a massive, great big uh, crater. So I think that'll probably do by the time I brought me digger and leveled it all off. Um, I think that's probably enough. So, and then hopefully I'll be able to spray right across at the moment I sort of have to mow around this big pit because otherwise you just lose your mower in it so yeah it's taken a bit of the uh, bit of me neighbour's soil anyway I don't know where I'm going to put the rest of it but yeah I've just got back and uh, I've noticed this bloody wheel's come loose it's hot that doesn't look good, does it? I think, uh, I think I've, uh, bloody lucky that didn't fall off. So, yeah. I haven't been checking my wheel nuts daily. In fact, I don't think I've checked those wheel nuts for the last 10 years. So. Better jack it up and see whether it can be salvaged. Yeah, my big limmy seems a lot better on its feet. This one's no good at all. It's just not doing anything. I don't know what you what you're supposed to do with them. Really, but, um, don't see them at the trough as much now. But yeah, it's just skin and bone. It's not growing. All the others are, are growing away from it. But yeah, that's the one that really bad hurt its leg. Look at it now. A week ago, it wasn't putting any weight on what, that front leg, but it's uh, it's all of a sudden got over it. And it's like already it's all it's putting it's got more shape on it than it did have. So I'm quite relieved about that. I was a bit worried that it was something a bit serious. So.
up here for the morning because there's not enough in the tub to feed these. So. Right, on with the hen jobs. They just disappear, don't they? I did manage to unload that trailer of straw today. Uh, the um, I think the wheel nuts, wheel nuts must have come loose, or well, yeah, I think that must have been what happened, and then it's broken all the welds that are on the um, studs. So everything's it, it's not completely wrecked, but everything's a little bit damaged. Some of the studs are uh, quite badly damaged. The rim is quite badly damaged. Two, two in particular of the holes on the rim of quite, um, what's the word? A fair bit bigger than they should be. And some of the nuts are pretty warm. But I've put two washers on the on the big on the big holes, and I've done them all up, and it's gone up tight. So I don't know. I think really, really, what it wants is a whole is a new rim, new studs. And probably new nuts, but I'll see how it goes tomorrow. Uh, I'll, I'll know as soon as I use it once. I'll know if they, if it all comes loose, then uh, I'm going to have to do a bit more to it, get, order some new parts. But yeah, that's what you get for not checking your wheel nuts ever. Annoyingly, it's not. The, it's a five stud wheel. And they're sixes. Uh, and I've got a lot, another set of spare uh, rims and tyres which are, are the same size tyre but they're a different uh, they're a different rim so it's, I haven't got any spares for it uh, so anyway right go down to the chickens I lied. Oh, there you are. There you are. One last job before I uh, be meaning to do this for a, before I turn them out. Just put an electric fence across here, uh, just to try and train them onto it. It's not something I've ever done before, but I figured while I'm waiting for them to go out, I could just get them used to it, and it'll save a lot of my of breaking fences and posts and stuff when you turn them out but oh god yeah in the time it took me I put the put the wire up and I had to run around and set the ticker up outside because I needed an earth so I had to put it outside in the grass by the time I ran round and got it connected they'd already they were all chewing on the wire and they snapped the wire so I had to put it up again and I was like god it doesn't take uh, Goes. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought they'd do that too many times. That's a fair old whack. Yeah, no, that's it. I'm not coming down this end of the pen again. Yeah, it's got to be cool to be kind, isn't it? But yeah, it's, an, I, it's not something I've ever done, but I saw it, uh, Richard Dove talking about it in one of his videos, just training his cat before he let them out. I always thought, Christ, who's got time to be doing things like that? But I must admit, there is there is some sense to it. I think. Surprising how many times they're uh... <laughs> surprising how many times they're going going to it. But yeah. At least if they break it, it's better that they break it in here and uh, they can't get out. Anyway, so yeah, I was hoping to up, to uh, put some some of Dan's footage in. I was going to do a bit of a Dan update because I've got he's he's taken loads of videos and um, photos and stuff for his trip. But I've just tried, I've just been through and down, manually downloaded every single file. 
because he's he's uploading everything onto Google, but I can't I can't edit uh, any of the files until I've downloaded them onto my phone, and G Google for some reason won't let you download them onto your phone, so I can't edit them, so I can't add them into the video, which is really frustrating because I've just spent ages downloading them all one at a time. But anyway. Um, yeah, he's making his way across. I think he's gone right across Switzerland now. So he's going. He he set off from like Lyon in France. Uh, he's gone across Switzerland, uh, Liechten Liechtenstein, which I can't say. And yeah, he's headed for Austria. He might even be in Austria. Yeah. And then, and then he's going to Hungary, through Hungary, which is going to be a fair old trek, and then I think through Romania. But yeah, I think what he's done so far is probably the majority of the hilly bits because he's been going along the Alps. So yeah, I think Switzerland was quite uh, hilly, but yeah, it looks really good, and I don't think he's had any major disasters. I mean, he's travelling light, he's only got his bag, literally his bag, his tent, a change of clothes. Uh, and that's it. And I think he's got some sort of a dynamo wheel or something on his bike so that he can he can charge his phone. Um, other than that, he's just relying on like campsite power and McDonald's Wi-Fi and things. And yeah, so yeah, I don't know. He seems to be enjoying himself, but yeah. And there's, it looks as though there's times that he's riding and hardly seeing any people or any cars. It's really quiet, so it's a bit of a change of scene. But anyway, at some point, hopefully I'll get some sort of footage, but um, I can't do it at the moment, which is annoying. But anyway, I'm going to end the video here and finish off my jobs. So. I've just rolled this shit off, these are my pullets, so I've just had 12 and a half trays, so they don't look bad eggs. Uh, high lines seem to be a bit pale to start off with, um, and then as they come, as they get further into lay, the eggs get darker shelled. Uh, whereas these, these are boven browns, which are the the next youngest shed and they they've been brown right from the start and they've stayed really brown they're really really nice eggs so so finally i'm sort of just about satisfying my uh orders because there's a bit you know the demand's going up because it's just started asparagus season in the farm shops so there's always a bit of a um increase in egg sales around uh, when asparagus comes into season and it's a bit late luckily this time so uh, yeah I'll be glad to have the extra eggs but yeah anyway we'll see how we get on uh, with my other jobs I think I've got the fertilizer I want done I need to try and get some spray this week and get some weeds sprayed if I can if it's not too late um, but yeah and get maybe get some cattle turned out at some point but yeah, well, anyways, I'll end the video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.